Hey Randall in Orlando, Florida. Matthew here with FreePrescriptionLenses.com and with the help of my GoPro camera I'm going to show you how I cut prescription lenses with transitions for your Ray-Ban 5184 color 2012 in the 52 eye size. So let's begin. I'm going to take everything out of its packaging. Of course your Ray-Ban case, your Ray-Ban cleaning cloth, and a little plastic sleeve that Ray-Ban puts on their frames when they ship to me to prevent the temples from rubbing together. And I'm going to include the same thing on yours when I ship to you. And of course this is the Ray-Ban 5184 color 2012 in the 52 eye size. So the first thing I'm going to do is take out the demo lenses, one of which it says Ray-Ban on there. I'm going to pop these out and of course you're going to get all the manufacturer's original packaging. And I'm going to take your frame, wake up the computer, and begin to trace the shape of your frame. A stylus is going to pop up here and it's going to go around and trace the shape of the right lens before moving over and tracing the shape of the left here at freeprescriptionlenses.com where everyone loves a bargain and no one is disappointed with quality. You buy a genuine authentic Ray-Ban frame and you will receive free clear single vision prescription lenses. Of course this frame sells for $180. You paid $49.99 to upgrade to transitions and your total price is $229.98. So that is the shape of your lens. Let's put in your pupillary distance which is 58 and that is 29 in each eye so you will see that number change as I hit this button and we can go ahead and get your lenses prepped now take your frame out and set it down I am going to need this put my little stylus back so your right eye reads minus 275 minus 75 at 100 we have minus 275 minus 75 in fact let me highlight that for you that is 275 minus 75 this is your right lens and minus 250 minus 50 at 100 is your left let me mark this one left there we go make that r a little bit better let me clean up my clean up some of my stuff here okay so i'm going to take your right lens out of the protective sleeve and i'm going to place it into my marco 101 lensometer spin the axis wheel to 100 which is actually rare that you have the same axis on both eyes I'm going to put the power drum on minus 275 and of course I'm going to need my little flashlight here in a moment. Let me grab that. So I'm going to put your lens in and rotate until the sphere power comes in clearly. Let me make sure I'm zeroed out. There we go. Now back to minus 275. Put your lens in. Find the optical center. Close that down. Clamp it into place. Check your astigmatism correction and we're good. I'm going to put three dots on your lenses which are hard for you to see so I'm going to darken those for you with a little white dot and that is one two and three and this is the right lens let's do the same thing now for the left lens minus 250 minus 50 at 100 take that out of the protective packing put the power drum on minus 250 rotate your lens till the sphere power comes in clearly Close down that clamp and then put three dots on your lenses. Uno, dos, ocho. And that is the left. Just seeing if you were paying attention there. So let's go ahead and take your lenses and go on back down here with my flashlight. Come on flashlight. Come on with me. Come on back with me. Now the reason why I put those dots on there is it shows me exactly how your lenses have to be oriented in the frame. So I'm going to put those there. Those white dots show up black on my screen. That one in the center is your optical center. That blue cross is the geometric center of your frame. If I was to measure vertically and horizontally, this would come up the crosshairs of a scope. But I'm going to move that inset just a little bit so that I get everything lined up perfectly. And of course, this is a block. I need to attach this to your lens in order with a double-sided adhesive sticker before I begin. So I'm going to that's already been applied to one side so I'm going to pull the paper away to make this side sticky. Now this little silver button in the back is a magnet. That's what's going to hold it in place on this arm. I'm going to take my stylus and hit the button and the block is applied to your left lens. Let's go ahead and do the same thing now for the left. Where's that little piece of sticky paper at? Here we go. Pull that off. Let's make it sticky. Line up the magnet. Let's get these lined up just perfectly. And 
hit that button and the arm's going to come down and drop onto your lens. So the actual cutting wheel is over here on the far right. It's going to act like a heavy grit sandpaper to grind away your lens material. This wheel in the center with that channel, that little valley, that's what's going to put the bevel onto the lens so as it stays inside the bevel of the frame. Put the lens into the chuck and pull up the shape of your lens on the computer and I am not going to polish the lens and I'm not going to put a bevel on the front of the lens, just a light one on the back and hit start. The first thing that's going to happen is that clamp is going to close and then your lens is going to go up and it's going to be traced by two white styluses. They're going to trace the shape of your lens, measuring the thickness of the lens at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so it will best fit inside your frame. I could move the bevel forwards or backwards if it needs to so it best fits inside your frame. Of course you don't have that much edge thickness to worry about. But if you did have strong lenses, this would be a great frame for them. So in just a moment, your lens will touch down onto the cutting wheel and you will hear a grinding sound. Now, Randall, your lenses are made out of polycarbonate material, polycarb, the brand name Airwear. Polycarb is 40% thinner and lighter than regular plastic. It is virtually unbreakable. It is bulletproof up to 22 caliber and has both UVA and UVB protection built into the lens. We know what the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays can do to your skin, especially in Orlando, Florida, where you get your own personal sun that follows you around but this is permanent sunscreen for your eyes. Your eyes are eight times more sensitive than your skin, so you never have to worry about reapplying sunscreen like you do with the lotions, creams, and sprays. Now, this is the final shape, and if you notice, your lens is still completely flat at the edges, just like a nickel. If I were to take it out now, it would stand up on the counter, but it's tracing one more time to, know, to find out the exact precise placement where to place the bevel so it's going to fit best inside the frame. It's constantly re-evaluating re re itself. That's how precise it is. Now it's going to go down onto the bevel wheel and get the knife-like bevel put onto the lens. Now your lenses are also aspheric. AS stands for aspheric, which simply means not spherical. A spherical lens is completely round in every direction and gives you an ugly cosmetic fishbowl appearance. Now you also have the Transition 7 gray lenses. Now, if you notice water has just started to begin spraying on your lens, it does it for the last 20 seconds of the cutting cycle just to wash away any optical debris. Now when you buy lenses from people online, they charge you for, for plastic lenses. And if you want to upgrade to the thinner, lighter weight, unbreakable polycarb, there's an upgrade fee for that. And then if you want the thinnest with the flattest curvature aspheric lens. Aspheric simply, not only is your lens thinner, but it's also a flatter curvature. So it matches the contour of the frame. And so if you want those aspheric lenses from someone else, they charge you a fee to upgrade to the aspheric. So this is someone else's top tier premium lens that you get for free just by buying lenses from me. Just for buying the frame just for buying the frame now you pay the upgrade to the transition which is only 49.99 and i doubt you're going to find anyone cheaper than me of course i work 100 hours a week to ship everything so i don't have time to search my competitors prices but i know i can beat them on anything else so i'm gonna i'm gonna tuck the lens in at the outside corner with my thumbs i push down at the nose it snaps in i'm gonna put the left lens in Flip that over to L and then hit start. Just like before, that clamp is going to shut. And then the two white calipers are going to begin to trace the shape of the left lens this time, as you will see it on the screen as they go around. And again, measuring the thickness at every point to know exactly where to place the bevel so your lens best fits inside your frame. Now, as you notice, you have no edge thickness whatsoever because you're only going to get the thinner, lighter weight lenses from me for free. And of course the aspheric lenses, so it matches the same curvature of your frame. 
Now I'm going to go ahead and take this block off. It is no longer needed. I'm going to dry your lens off and leaving that white dot that you can barely see right there. But I'm going to go back down and we're going to check the prescription in the right eye. We're still at 100. I'm going to put the lens in over that white spot. Where's my flashlight? And I'm getting minus 275, which is one tick mark away from three. I'm going to check your astigmatism correction. And we're at minus 350. That is because, remember high school algebra, you add like signs together, 275 and 75 gives you 350. Of course, using today's terms, if someone had borrowed $2.75 and then they borrowed another 75 cents, they would owe you $3.50. We're at 350, exactly halfway between three and four. Now, the unit of measurement we use in the optical world is called a diopter, spelled D-I-O-P-T-E-R. It starts at zero and goes up from there, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, 0 0.75, 1, 1 and a quarter, and so on. Hang on, I gotta do some math in my head. 278, you're at the 11th step. You need 11 steps of correction for your farsightedness. You're, you are nearsighted with your glasses off. You can see great from here in, but whatever you can't reach with your hands, you need your glasses for that. So this first number, and as you see, it's a minus. You need 11 steps of correction to minify everything down. Without your glasses on, everything is much larger in real life than it appears. So when you put your glasses on, it will minify to the correct size. Now you have an additional three steps of astigmatism correction. There is a stigma over the word astigmatism. It just means shape. It's like saying someone has straight hair, someone else has curly hair. It is not a disease, it is not an affliction. This first number makes everything the right size. Astigmatism is what makes sixes and eights or the letters P and F look alike. Think of it as your fine-tuned knob. And we're gonna turn that knob to 100, a straight line is zero to 180. So we're gonna turn that fine-tuned knob just past the 90th meridian to 100. Now your left eye is a little bit better. You only need 10 steps of correction in your left eye and you only need two steps of astigmatism correction in your left. This is what's rare. It's very rare that people have the same number in each eye, the axis. Now these first two numbers are real values that tells us the powers that we're working with. This is an arbitrary number. It could be anywhere from zero to 180. That's why I can take one lens. This is your right lens, minus 275, minus 75. I can spin this anywhere from zero to 180 and the same lens will cut out. That just tells me where to turn everything to make everything nice and crisp. Where'd your frame go? Here it is, down here. So, let's go ahead and take your left lens out. Dry it off. Use my thumbnail to scrape away any residue lens material that may still be on there. I'm gonna, whoop, it's still wet. I don't wanna drop this thing on live TV. That's always embarrassing, so I ain't gonna do it. So, to see if your left lens fits, I'm tuck it in at the outside corner using my thumbs. I press down at the nose, it snaps in perfectly. Somewhere there is a tool to remove this block. Somewhere there's a fingernail long enough to get that off. So, I'm gonna put it in your left eye right above that white dot and I'm going to measure the power in the left eye. And I'm getting minus 250, which is exactly halfway between two and three. And then when we check your astigmatism correction, I'm at a total of minus three, again, 250 and 0.50 gives me three. I couldn't cut that any better if I had done it myself. But wait, I did do it myself. Can I, can I see those dots? Now, your pupillary distance is 58 in each eye, so I'm going to turn the card around. And I don't know if you can see that. Let me darken those white dots for you. And now I'll put the back of the card up, and I'm going to place the zero against my thumb on your right lens. And when we measure on the left lens, we're getting 58 millimeters, so that is made perfectly. Now, this is the time I like to explain, where's my tissue? There it is. And all my videos that when you get these in the mail, Randall, there's a very small chance that these could be too loose or too tight. However, there's an 80% chance that one side is going to sit higher than the other. That is because 80% of people have one ear that is higher than the other, and I'm no different. I am part of that 80%. But because of that 80%, that is why 99% of all optical shops will do free adjustments if you ask them. So just stop by your local place and tell them that it's either too loose, too tight, or it's not sitting right. It only takes about 30 seconds to adjust a pair of glasses perfectly. 
So, but I'm going to get them in standard alignment first, also known as a three-point stance. The three points are one, two, and the bottom of the frame being three. I set them on the counter and press down. There is no wobble. When I say wobble, I'm part of that 80%. When I take mine off, they wobble on the counter, but they sit level on me. I'm going to flip them over, press down, no wobble. I close each temple to make sure they overlap perfectly, and they do, and that they're not askew in any way. And there's the same amount of tension on each hinge. Now, this is what your lenses look like while they are clear. I'm going to go ahead and activate the transitions portion of your lens. I'm going to just expose them to a strong burst of ultraviolet light. And as you can see, it takes about 30 to 45 seconds for transition lenses to darken. It takes a little bit longer when you come back inside, about 45 seconds to a minute to a minute 15. Now, Randall, pay attention. This is important. All transition lenses will get dark on day one. Give them two weeks of exposure to the sun and they're going to continue to darken every day for the first two weeks until they get to their final setting. After that, they will work for years with maximum performance. The only time they will not work is when you're behind your windshield in a car. Your windshield absorbs all the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays that would cause your dashboard to crack. That's why it doesn't. And that's why your lenses won't turn dark in the car. Now, as soon as you step out of the car, they will darken. Now, if you have a convertible or a motorcycle, they'll darken there too, just not behind a windshield. Now, they also work best when it's below 85 and 90 degrees. Once it gets up into triple digits, you're miserable, they're miserable. No one wants to work 100% when it's that hot outside. Now, this is the first time they've been activated, and don't worry, Randall, they're going to keep darkening. Remember, we talked about this. Come on, pay attention. But that's that. Of course, this is a great color for this frame. It's the classic tortoise, the dark Havana. And if anyone has any questions about what I can or can't do, just email me at freeprescriptionlenses at gmail.com. Randall in Orlando, Florida. I hope you enjoyed watching as I cut prescription lenses with Transitions 7 Gray for your Ray-Ban 5814, 5184, excuse me, color 2012 in the 52 eye size. And everyone else has got the chance to see how I bring that loving feeling back to glasses. Thank you.